Welcome to another episode of Amazing Plastic the Scale Model Show. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland. This is episode number 11. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me again uh, on this uh, episode, and I hope you enjoy what we've got coming up for you. On today's show, we are going to go back to uh, the Evil Duck Creation Studio with Jay Barron, and we are going to be looking at two-part molds this time. You might remember a while back we did an episode on one-part molds, but now we're going to tackle the two-part molds, something you may want to look into if you're wanting to replace parts or parts that you know are kind of fragile and you want to mold up uh, prior to uh, building your model kit. As you can see behind me, we've got some new acquisitions here in the studio. We have the new Aerofix de Havilland 170 second scale Tiger Moth. Uh, this is a gorgeous little kit. This is their new tooling. Uh, this is a tiny little plane. It's only about four and a half inches long when it's built. And uh, I'm going to do a review on this kit a little bit later on. We also have the Lancaster 170 second scale, Avril Lancaster. This is also a new tooling from uh, Airfix. So we'll be taking a look at that a little bit later on. We've got the 170 second scale Space Shuttle. Uh, this is the Discovery Endeavor and Atlantis versions. So you can do either or, depending on which one you want to do. And then we have the Snap Tight Kit that we will be doing for the Make and Take on May 3rd, presented by PM Hobbycraft at PM Hobbycraft's Northeast location in Calgary, Alberta. Um, this is a 172nd scale snap tight kit. This is the Blue Angels F-18 Hornet. And uh, we're also going to do a little bit of review on that as well. Uh, I want to give some shout-outs today to uh, folks that made comments on last week's video. Carwin Morris, Dirk Pitt, Danny Monahan, James Marksbury, Kim Andrews, Joey Aguilera, Mr. Rusty Bill 1960, James Hout, Glues Brothers, Jason Garris, David Stahl, Paulo Medeiros, Chris Pandoff, Eric Hawkins, and Perrin Greenaway. Thank you very much for your comments, guys. Uh, we really appreciate them. And if you have any suggestions for an upcoming show or you have any uh, anything you want to cover, you can always leave a comment below the video. Or you can drop us a line at info at amazingplastic.com. So don't forget that. Um, I also want to thank everybody who sent me birthday wishes. Uh, this episode was supposed to be up on Friday, April the 11th, but it was my birthday, so I took the day off. So it is going to be on uh, today, which is April April 12th, Saturday, April 12th. Uh, we've got another show coming up for you on Wednesday. Stick around. You, you're going to want to see this show because it's, it's going to be jammed pack full of stuff so um if you look at uh, a previous post that i made in our community you'll know what shows are on on the rise i want to get back to the make and take uh, for a second uh the make and take is presented as i said by pm hobbycraft at their northeast location in calgary alberta on may 3rd um PM Hobbycraft has been family owned and operated for over 50 years and we're so happy to have them as a sponsor of the show that uh, they give you a chance to get a discount on any of the model kits uh, that you may want to order from them on their, from their online store at pmhobbycraft.ca and the offer code you want to use at checkout is AMZ dash 214 dash pls now those are all capital letters and you can see that right down here and uh use that offer code when you go to pmhobbycraft.ca and buy any plastic model kit they will give you 10 percent off an online order so it's really good really really good uh i also want to talk quickly about our cafe press store which as you know is going to be coming to an end by the end of june uh, we are going to start uh, doing our own fine t-shirts here in-house. Uh, we'll have coffee cups and aprons and t-shirts. But if you still want to get one of the Cafe Press ones, I do encourage you to go over to cafepress.com slash amazingplastic and get one of these fine t-shirts or a coffee mug uh, or uh, one of the work aprons, which I use when I'm doing a lot of work here at the bench myself. So uh, by all means, go check that out at, uh, again, that is Cafe press.com slash amazing plastic all one word okay so let's get on with the show let's get over to evil duck creations and jay baron with his look at making a two-part mold 
A two-part mold is used if you want to cast an entire object, uh, do a full three-dimensional reproduction of something. In this case, for a demonstration, I'm going to cast this. This is a cricket phaser from Star Trek The Next Generation, and for anyone out there who's worried about me recasting, this is my, my sculpt, so it's okay for me to do this. You're going to need a Surface 2 make your mold on. It's a good idea to do that. I mean, I don't want to put it there because then I can't move for about a day. Can't use this, but a surface of some sort doesn't really matter too much what it is because you're going to cover this with clay anyway. This is just straight modeling clay. I know some people out there use water-based clay. That does work, but uh, I, I don't know why they don't use regular modeling clay. It works fine. Years back, I know that sometimes silicone didn't react well to modeling clay, this type with the oil in it. It seems to work fine now. First thing you want to do is mount the, either the top, the bottom, the side, however you want to do it. Mount it into the modeling clay. You want it to come up about halfway. Now, you can choose which way you want to mold it based on how much molding material you want to use, you know, how much uh, material you have, which way would be the easiest to cast it. I'm figuring that casting it through the back here or doing what is called uh, making a hollow mold using a rotocasting method, which I will show you, that would work real well with this too. So I'm going to put a little bit of clay underneath the front to hold it in place. And now I want to build up an edge around it going right up about to about to the edge of the model. Just cutting some strips here to work with. have to be super neat about this but you want it to come up to the casting point on the model. I'm going to put some more in here. Doesn't matter if it's perfectly level across this way. That does not matter at all. What does matter is that you have it up snug so that your silicone doesn't ooze underneath. I'm going to keep working on this, getting that put around there and getting it trimmed down into a usable area and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we've got We've got the piece mounted in here. I've uh, gotten the edges of the plasticine or modeling clay up to, smoothly up to the edge of the model. And we're going to want to put a dam around this to hold, uh, hold the silicone in. But the first, before that, we want to put in what are called registries keys. They're basically slots that allow the mold to be put back together and the edges to line up properly. There's a number of ways that this can be done. Let's a little bit more down here. Easiest way I found is to just take a rounded object and press in. Just press in some divots around the edge. Some people make a special tool to scoop out the clay. I find this works just quite well just to press it in like this. I'll put another one right there just for safekeeping. Check to make sure none of the clay is pulled away. Okay, now we want to make a dam around this. I've taken more of the plasticine. 
and just press it in around the edges we're certainly not going to fill it this full but I want to just put this on here make sure that it is pressed up you want to leave yourself some room around the edge to give the sides of the model some support if you don't have that then even if your model is registered properly you have to build some sort of solid some sort of solid um, material like a plaster bandages or something over the top of it to hold it together and on a mold this size that's kind of a pain press all this in tightly might have to reach in with a modeling tool and press it against the sides in some areas just again to make sure that things don't leak out This doesn't have to be anywhere near this tall. I can cut this way down. Make it easier to see what we're doing. Okay. Bring these edges in a little bit. Now, again, we need to figure out how much material are we going to need to, to pour into this. So we're going to do it the same way that we did before. I'm going to fill this with water up to the level that I want it to be. And then I'm going to pour that water off and measure how much is there. And that will tell me how much silicone I'm going to need. This is a nice little step, too, because it also shows you any leaks you might have. Want to cover the model. You don't have to go too deep. I don't see any leaking. Okay, so now I can measure this amount of water, let the mold dry out a little bit, and then we can mix our first batch of silicone. Okay, the water poured into this larger container showed that that is the level of our TV silicone that I need to do the top part of the phaser. So, again, we're going to measure this, pour this in, and we're going to give it 10% by weight of the alumilite. Okay. Sun. This weighs 85 grams, so we're going to put in about 9 grams. Bring it up to about 94. I'm actually going to give it a little bit less because I, I want a little bit of working time. Okay. Mix this up as before. I want to mix it so that it is one uniform color. And we're going to apply the silicone in a little different manner than we did before. We're going to pour it in, but going to do it in kind of two stages. And if you ever get any of this and your hardener isn't yellow, don't worry about it. 
comes in all different colors and flavors and textures and all kinds of wonderful things. Okay, this looks good. Now I'm going to start to apply it, but I'm going to apply a layer down first using a brush. This is just, a, I think it's called a flux brush. I use it like a chip brush. I want to paint on first layer here to basically press it into all the little detail. It is a way to help keep bubbles out of it and to make sure that you are getting the silicone down and grabbing as much detail as you possibly can because with a silicone mold you can pick up fingerprints. Yeah, the, whatever detail, you know, the, the finest detail you can imagine you can pick up. There are some little bubbles here showing up, but I'm going to put this into the vacuum unit to help with uh, removing them. Although you can, at this stage, just stand here and get rid of the bubbles as they come up. Another thing you could do if you wanted would be to mix the silicone itself in two batches. Do a small batch where you are coating over everything and then a larger batch after this first batch has hardened to finish up. There's an undercut in the front. I'm pressing the silicone into that to make sure it gets there. Okay, now, come on baby, pour the rest of this in, and you can see, see that I've got a bit of a thickness on the top. There are ways, since the silicone is expensive, there are ways to make it stretch. I'm doing a very basic mold technique right now. There are other ways that you can do it that will help this material stretch out and you need less than half of what I just did to make your mold. But I wanted to show you the standard way first. So I'm going to go put this into the vacuum unit and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, this has hardened up very nicely. We want to take the clay off. I want to remove it from the bottom here and I want to carefully peel it up and off. I'd rather not release the piece yet. Okay, clean out the extra clay here. Pull that off. This is going to work out quite well. What I want to do now is wrap clay around this piece again so that we can make the secondary mold for the second half and before I actually mold this down get all the little clay off of there before I, I make the next part of the mold I want to make absolutely sure that I paint the entire any any area that you see silicone I want to paint that with Vaseline or some sort of a mold release because silicone will stick to itself quite well and you will have a great deal of difficulty getting them apart you actually won't be able to get them apart you'd have to cut it to separate them so I'm going to put some more clay on here I'm going to put some Vaseline on the uh, rubber part and then I'm going to pour another batch of silicone on that and let that harden up and we'll be back in a moment. This side has now finished. It's very hard. These chunks in here, uh, when I poured the second half of the mold, I deliberately didn't use enough to completely do the mold to the thickness I wanted because I wanted to show you a little trick. You can use old molds that you've made before and you can cut chunks off of them. and put them into 
the poured silicone so that it helps bulk it out. You can even cut very flat pieces and lay them down to build areas. It's just a way to help save on the amount of silicone. So we're going to pull this clay off. And now, hopefully, this should just come apart. Might give me a little trouble at first. There we go. Okay. No bubbles. Or if there are, they're very, very few. Might be a little bit right there, but that's easily sandable. This can be... I could, I could cut a hole in one end and... Putting these together, I could pour the resin into that and end up making, you know, one solid piece. Or another thing I can do is what is sometimes called a slush mold, sometimes called a hollow mold. It's also known as rotocasting. And a rotocasting mold is very easy to do. I will demonstrate right at this, you know, right on this one. Okay, I have got one half of my casting resin there. I'm now going to put in the other half, mix this up, and I'm going to pour it into the mold, but I'm certainly not going to fill the mold. I'm only going to do about half full, maybe a little bit less than that. Mix this up real quickly. Again, mix this until it's clear. Okay. Pour this in. I'll pour the rest of it in there. Now, seal up the mold. And then just pick the mold up. and keep it moving around and around. The idea is to coat all sides of the inside of the mold before it cures, obviously. Better way to do this is to actually put it between two flat pieces of uh, board, cardboard, or whatever. That helps hold everything closed. I'm just waiting for the liquid in the waiting for the liquid that is left over to flash so that I can see when this would be done because once it flashes it's finished. It's, it's, it's not going to continue to spread. It looks like it is flashing. I'm going to let it go a little bit here just to make a hundred percent sure. Okay, I'm just going to set that down, let it sit until it is completely cured. Okay, one thing I failed to mention is that before I poured the resin in, I did dust the area, dust the inside with talcum powder, and then took care of it, because you got to get it as much out of there as possible, because I want to, that helps prevent bubbles and it helps act as a mold release. Okay, that's half of it. And the other half, a little bit of flash around the edges, which is easy to take care of. It is uh, light and it is hollow. So once it's, it's, it's not completely hardened because this, this will just snap off once it's completely hardened. But I have a mold that I can, or I have a uh, casting now that I can cut open and put lights in or whatever I want to. So until next time, thanks for watching. Well, Jay's a master model builder, and he sure knows his stuff when it comes to making molds. And I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, segment on two-part molds. Uh, we Later on in uh, the season, this season, we've got uh, a bit coming up, a second part to doing photography uh, on your models, this time using Photoshop to do some enhancement. Um, and uh, we'll tell you more about that as we, as we finish that segment up. Uh, a couple things I want to touch on really quickly. Again, I want to tell you about the Cafe Press Store. It is closing at the end of June. We will be moving everything over to our new website, a really updated, really 
slick, nice looking website uh, by June f- or July first. Pardon me, and you'll be able to get your t-shirts, your mugs, and and your aprons all there. So until that time, please support the show by picking up one of our items over at our Cafe Press store at cafepress.com/slash amazing plastic, all one word. Okay, now, where can you find us online? Well, you can find us all over the place. You can find us at our website at amazingplastic.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, as well as our G Plus community. Now, I want to give a big shout out to all of the all of the people that follow us and our members. Uh, currently on YouTube, we are at 663 subscribers. We're really trying to get that over the thousand by the time we hit our first anniversary. Um, on Facebook, we are at 729 uh, likes and followers. And at our G Plus community, uh, we are at 741 members. Wow, I could not have imagined when I started Amazing Plastic, the community, that it would grow in the leaps and bounds that it has. And it is all due to the people that take part in that community and show everybody what they do. They answer questions. They help you along with the builds. They encourage you to keep going with your builds. Recently, we had a young man uh, who's been a part of our community uh, since almost the beginning. And he's also the guy who designed our wonderful logo for Amazing Plastic. He was having a little trouble with uh, getting over a little hump with his, his model that he was currently on. And, you know... With all the outpouring of support, I think he soldiered on and got through it, and I think he's uh, he's proud of the end effort. Uh, and that's something that we always want to tell you that, you know, a model is only as good as you want it to be. It is your model. You do with it what you want. Don't worry about what other people think. As long as you're happy and proud of the, the product that you've made from that original box of plastic, it's all good. It's great. So go ahead, make your model, do it the way that you want to. You don't have to make it canon. You don't have to be a rivet counter. You just have to have fun. And that's what this hobby is all about, is having fun. And uh, we really enjoy all the postings that we get over at our G Plus community. I uh, I try and and at least plus one them, if not comment on uh, things that I see on our G Plus community. But uh, we do have a, several moderators over there that help out, and uh, they get things through. And and uh, also, when I can't make my little comments, they they uh, do it for me. So uh, I appreciate all those guys as well. Uh, now that being said, so our show is kind of wrapped up for this week. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us again this week. My name is Richard Cleveland. As always, I'm going to be with you, here with you each and every show. Uh, next week, or on Wednesday, we have David Stahl's look at the Mr. Sticky's Adhesives Factory. He goes in and talks to the owner and talks to a little bit about how adhesives are made, the adhesives that we use here to, make, uh, to put our models together. And I'll also be reviewing some products from BSI. That's Bob Smith Industries. They have a great line of products, and you may not even know that Bob Smith Industries is the glue that you're buying because it's been rebranded by so many different companies, and i got to tell you, they make a great product, so I'm going to give you a little review and uh, look at some of the products that they have as well. Uh, so until next time, remember, it's only a model till you make it amazing. I'm Richard. We'll see you next time. Take care.